。はい。Um, I will be mobile until I'm in the car. So let's see if that works. Hey. Hi. Hi, Eric. I am waiting for one more. So no, two more. Hello, people. Hello. And coming, or it's it, because he entered his name last meeting. Um, I'm not sure. Let me check. There's something in here. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I was just not sure because he entered it last. Yeah. Week. Same for me. Yeah. <laughs> Always there, so. Okay, then we are waiting for Kamel still. He did a pull request just a couple of minutes ago, so he should be there also. Yeah. Okay, we are complete. So, in second. Awesome. Let's start. So, let me remind everybody by attending, we are all agreeing to the GraphQL spec membership agreement and the GraphQL code of conduct. Uh, we are starting the meeting with an introduction from everybody in the order of the agenda. And I will start with myself. I'm Michael Stipe. I'm the host tonight. Hey everyone, Shame from Apollo. Martin, also from Apollo. Hey, Giuseppe from uh, from the Lego Group. Hey, Derek from Apollo. Pascal from Chili Cream. And coming from the Guild. Awesome. We have two agenda items, one that we dropped last time. We will do that first. And then Derek asked, entered one about the usage of variables in selection sets. So let's start with uh, Martin and then we can go on. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a continuation of a discussion we've um, we've had before. And there's a, there's an open issue where um, some of us have, have commented uh, on before uh, as well. Um, but it was sort of brought to the front by the, um, um, I think by the, the prospect of us sort of more publicly talking about the efforts of this group at GraphQLCon, for instance. Um, and I think it's important we, um, we start thinking about sort of how we want to refer to the efforts of this group and to the spec. Um, and one of the things we discussed before was that composite schemas is a much broader term than Sort of the scope of this specific specification, um, because we're not uh, really targeting sort of arbitrary composition. We have a fairly specific set of design principles that are really um, meant to um, apply to uh, a federated approach, where we have sort of 
independent teams contributing to a shared schema um, with a uh, principled composition approach, et cetera. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering what people's current thoughts are on this and whether people have, have sort of discussed this in the meantime. Um, I think one of the things is, is sort of we, um, federation is what it has become sort of an established term. It's something that people are familiar with. And I think for, um, for, for the understanding of what we're trying to do here, I think it, it might be good to sort of capitalize on that name. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm wondering what other people's thoughts are. Yeah. Um, my personal reservation for federation is that it's um, also very closely aligned to Apollo Federation as a term. And yeah. it is a different thing. Like it's also not a day one compatibility, right? Like when you take today's federation, it's different from what we are specifying in the group. Like wouldn't be uh, compatible at the moment. I mean, we all will implement uh, the specification and then it is compatible. Um, but uh, what I mean is there there is confusion that you also saw into the market, right? Yeah, I mean, other people have started to refer to their approaches as sort of federated GraphQL as well. And even the term GraphQL Federation has been used sort of outside of, of Apollo Federation already. Um, I... I wonder sort of what the the less confusing option is here because if we don't if there's like we're we're not necessarily specifying the current Apollo Federation but we are thinking of the 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 standard we're specifying here as the um, the core of the next version of of sort of a shared federation spec so in that sense it's a for us at least it's a continuation of Apollo Federation or it's a subset of Apollo Federation. Um, I, I don't know how you think about this and how you sort of think your customers will sort of perceive the relationship and the understanding of what, what sort of federation is. Um, yeah, as it, when I talk about it, it's more broad. So I refer to it as distributed graph graph to include a lot more approaches. Yeah. Um, as it, to try not to confuse it, um yeah i mean we also initially this uh this whole effort was uh, driven by by fusion right and then we um on purpose chose a name which doesn't include uh something to confuse people so there's no products name in it yeah now federation is uh also part of a product so i think it probably makes sense that we use something which is neutral, right? I mean, the 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 the, the sort of company specific specification is is Apollo Federation, and, and there mm. are other federation approaches already um, in the GraphQL ecosystem. Are there? Or I think I think, are... I think Hasura, for instance, also refers to their approach as GraphQL but, but Federation. Isn't that <laughs> isn't that a stretch? <laughs> I mean, it, it 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 might be, it might be, but I but I think the term federation is is more broad than just the specific approach that that Apollo took. I think feder federation signals something beyond composition, but also beyond distributed, um, because it's really about collaboration and and sort of independent entities coordinating uh, on a shared. Yeah, the, the the one thing I really like when you Google for it, then. It's it's really all Apollo Federation, yeah. And um, you you find if I scroll through, you find Wondergraph, which is also Apollo Federation, um, sort of. But it's it's very heavily uh, to geared toward this product, and then you could never search for the specification. Whereas if we have composite schema spec with it, which is. A, it's not a sexy name. I, I I agree with that. So I would, if we find something different, uh, certain uh, take something different. But um, like yeah, you could search for it, and uh, you would find it. You f would find the specification in there. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the, my my point Wait, there is, Sh you could... Pascal Shane had the hand up. 
Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to, from Apollo's, you know, internal perspective, right? We we still see Federation as an open spec. That is not our product per se, right? We still view GraphOS and the the platform and our studio UI and the router and all its enterprise features. That's like our product that we sell. We internally don't even view Federation as like the the thing we're selling, right? Like, so I just want to clarify, you know, we, this is why we're also bringing this up is because we, if let's say the spec name did change and we were the GraphQL Federation spec, right? Apollo Federation is Apollo's implementation of the GraphQL Federation spec, not the other way around, right? Or there's the standard and then there's like Apollo's from that. It's, we want to bring forward the commonality of the spec and yes, I think the searchability of Federation is always going to be there because, right, it's Federation. Like, if you search composite schemas, you're going to get Apollo Federation, like, first result anyway, right? Like, um, so it's always going to be a problem. I think it's, uh, you know, and, like, if I search Federation, I don't know, I'm going to get F, uh, every every vendor is probably going to want to buy that term too, whether it's composite schemas or GraphQL Federation. So that everyone's <laughs> SEO search results are always going to probably be filled with vendor search results coming from there too. It it, it just uh, thinking outside the GraphQL landscape, GraphQL is still not widely adopted. Like let's be clear, like it is still a lot of people don't even know GraphQL exists, and so when they hear all this stuff for the first time, like. In two years from now, when someone hears for the first time, what's this federation spec? Like, do we want to call it the federation spec? Or, and then there's all these implementations of it. And one is the Apollo vendor implementation of it. One is the Chili Cream vendor implementation of it. Like, I think the name GraphQL Federation does a better job very explicitly describing what the spec is and what it does in terms of everything else written without composite schemas. So I think that that's where where we're coming from internally too. Sky, you're next. Um, yeah, I. The the, my my personal take on it was uh, is that it essentially could be named banana spec, but uh, that was something that that was a long discussion even before this all started, right? So. Um, just my personal take on it. For because of hot chocolate banana cake pop, or is that? No, no, no. He just said he doesn't care what it, what it's uh, actually called. I think that's what you mean, Pascal. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just yes, yeah, about yeah, how, yeah. How we exactly, are... exactly. It doesn't. It, it, that, that's that's now uh, a bad coincidence because I said it shouldn't be a product name in it, and now I accidentally <laughs> put the product name in it. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean there, that's it's it's still a product, right? And uh, there there was long there was many discussions about it, and then we we basically landed on the composite schemas back in the initial announcement. So I think that's something. Um, yeah. It's, it's something to discuss that we find a better name for it and what this name should be. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 don't, I don't think we're going to solve it in this meeting. I just wanted to bring it up again and make sure that we start thinking about this um, and, and continue the conversation maybe on, on the issue we already have. Um, but I think as we're getting closer to talking more publicly about our efforts at GraphQL Conf and beyond, it, it's important that we do have a shared, um, a shared name, a shared vision on, on sort of how we're going to present this. I think, um, and the relationship with um, Apollo Federation, I think, is is important to get clarity on because that's something um, users will uh, wonder about. Um, like if we start talking about composite schemas. And um, we don't mention sort of the relationship with Apollo Federation at all. It's going to look like a parallel effort. Um, and um, it's a very, I mean, obviously it's a very close, uh, uh, like to us, it's, it's, it's a continuation of, of, of something we've been working on for many years and that we already perceive as something that goes beyond just our yes. efforts. I'm, I mean, but uh, to, to be honest, the, the blog post did a good job in, Actually saying okay, uh, like the approaches like Fusion and um, Apollo Federation, yeah. basically 
uh, is basically we took the best part of both and um, fused them together. And now uh, that is what the composite schema spec is. So uh, I, th I think uh, that's a communication thing, right? And uh, we are not saying this is a this is a completely new thing. Um, and like in the blog post, it, it was it, like Benji put it in a very good uh, way, I would say, communication wise. I I, th I I just the per my personal thing and uh, is that it uh, kind of it kind of would look like that this is just an Apollo only thing uh, and that is not the thing we 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 didn't just take everything from Apollo there and this is not a one to one plan so it's no. basically a living thing we are working on in these working group meetings and it has a big chunk of Apollo Federation in there. Um, and uh, like this ancestry or how we want to call that, um, uh, that we will not deny anywhere, right? But yeah, um, I also think we, we don't solve it in this meeting, but I will think about that. Um, I think everybody can think about that. Uh, but, it, I, but like the, the problem that we run into is that it will be very difficult to market and to have the distinction. And also if you look for a documentation wise, um, will also confuse people because then you will find the Apollo Federation stuff and that will be always on top. Uh, and, but then you don't find the actual spec. Like when I look for composite schema spec, it's the first search result. To, to play devil's and, advocate on this. Um, we could change the we could change our, our spec name. We could become Apollo Composite Composite Schemas, <laughs> right? Like, well, there's always going to be that issue. Someone's going to become like the, you know, bananas Composite Schemas like vendor, right? Like, there's always going to be that issue. If someone's going to try to take over the, I, I don't think anybody would take this name, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> No, I, I mean, so, I, it, well, I, I don't think it's just about the naming of the spec, though. I think I think using the term federation or federated GraphQL, I think that sort of that, yeah. that is that is an important part of how we, I think, differentiate this particular approach from other composite schema approaches. Um, yes, and I don't have uh, I don't have a concern in that, right? Um, I just think that the spec should be searchable for. And not be muddled with uh, Apollo Federation, even Apollo Federation as a spec. Um, but I don't have a problem uh, to talk about that is federated GraphQL uh, because, like, that distinguishes a bit. Like, that's the approach actually versus the uh, Apollo Federation as a product or a specification, even. Right? Do 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 you get my? My concern. I, I do it. I, I get that, but um, I don't think it's enough because if federated GraphQL is the approach, like there are alternatives to the spec we're working on <laughs> um, that would also describe themselves as federated. Um, and I think it's yes, important that we have a term a that signals both that like it's an implementation of federated GraphQL, but it's something more specific. It's a very and that's, specific. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's even worse. <laughs> When when Hazura now introduces, like what they are doing is more a stitching approach, uh, at least the last I uh, looked at it. Uh, and uh, also like they have uh, lots of uh, other stuff in there that uh, that wouldn't meet up with what we uh, see under Federation. Yeah. Um, let's think about it. Uh, like, like I will, I will also have a have a sleepover and um but we need to set the specification apart from all this 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 needs to be unique and needs to be like okay this is the specification and everybody is implementation uh, implementing the specification uh, abiding to the specification and that means um uh, and that means something like uh we we have a clear meaning about uh what this thing is 
as if there is federation as a term and we don't have a clear understanding what federation it is. Like it would be a very bad um, thing if we have three or four GraphQL federation approaches. Like, um, like that, that would be very confusing. You mean three or four different graph? Um, yeah, if, if Hazura, if, if Hazura foundation? If, no, if Hazura now calls their approach federation, which is not implementing the composite schema spec, is not implementing <laughs> Apollo federation, is something else. Then we have Apollo federation. And then we have another thing that is what we do here in the in the foundation, which we also call federation. You suddenly federation becomes um, like a term where you don't know what it is. Yeah. We also have a, a a federated stitching approach, right? In in chili cream, that that is also <laughs> branded with this name, which is something which You're is right. completely different from everything. So it's like it's a great name, but it's Apparently, everyone uses it for something different. I forgot about that, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's, let's brainstorm on that. Uh, I will also have a look at, at Hazura again. Yeah, I mean, I just Googled for GraphQL Federation, like the whole. Um, term and there's there's a large number of hits like even a post by by ibm and some from like other um api gateway companies um everybody wants to kind of also take a cake uh, take a piece of the cake right yeah <laughs> like like uh, capitalize on the on the naming yeah 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 and the second result is graphql.com not apollo so it's yeah, I think it's possible that traffic patterns can definitely change for that. So. Graphical.com is is Apollo, right? We ma we maintain that, but not in for the purposes of Apollo as a vendor. We do that for the general um, graphical education. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's do our research and and think about it and get back to it. Um. Yeah, yeah, and um, but I agree with you that we have to synchronize on how we want to talk about it because um, we also will have like a panel. I mean, you will also be there, Mark. No. Yeah. That's so we will have a panel. So I expect you will be on it. <laughs> um and uh, we should have we there shouldn't be it shouldn't be difficult to talk about it like if we struggle for how do we call certain things uh, then that would be a very confusing panel and yeah. um and i uh, let's brainstorm a bit i mean you can you guys do it in, in your company but we do also brainstorm a bit and find uh, something that's agreeable and then uh, have a clear messaging. Sounds good. Okay. So it wasn't five minutes, but so I'll, I'll try to keep- I'll <laughs> that, try that was to very optimistic. The, I'll try <laughs> to keep said, under the- 15 uh, minutes uh, on the, the variables things, right? So um, when we're, so Pascal is doing a great job in doing the, all the selections and syntax, right? Mapping the inputs to outputs. And that's the syntax that we need for the lookups, right? And we also uh, will most likely need for the require use cases, right? But one thing, one use case that we haven't talked about, yes, is actually the variables, right? So one of the examples here, I can actually, share my screen is the one of the examples we have that folks are using it is when you're using the requires folks want to pass well also the arguments to it right so that's one of the things that that we're doing and uh, this is right now just hard-coded so we don't support 
and Apollo Federation. This is the, the dynamic stuff on the requires. But we also just shipped another feature that allows you to do a variables syntax on it as well. <laughs> uh, so yeah. this allows you to basically uh, think about as the requires on steroids. So requires is kind of like limited to, uh, to the same entity fields, right? But this allows you to fetch stuff from the hierarchy that to the fetch. Yeah. So it's getting something from, you know, as long as I get to the user over there, I'll have this contextual data that I can inject there and I can fetch it from there. So this is something that like folks are working around by using those super complex keys that they don't need extra information to attach to it and stuff like that, right? So I just wanted yeah. to uh, uh, start the discussion uh, around this sort of uh, thing that they actually just bring to attention and what are that. You know, folks yeah, I actually, I actually talked with this with Martin and yeah. on private messages, a couple of uh, that that also plays into like mutations. Uh, if you want to uh, also have like complex saga patterns, also uh, things like that with federation, then you on mutations maybe you want to have uh, even queries that you uh, get state from, right? Uh, like top level uh, mm -hmm. data that you aggregate. We're doing a similar thing in infusion with the variables to aggregate state in such a variable um i put it a bit on the side <laughs> uh, yeah for complex uh, just for complexity reasons uh, that we uh, but yeah, uh, I've, yeah i've never I've, I've i've never seen this in black so i would have to um to to have a look and to to get an idea about what what this is I understand the problem that we have with uh, this uh, requirements of uh, some kind of context data. Um, context data in GraphQL, like top down, usually there's we in 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 hot chocolate we call this scoped context data. So you yeah. have a scope, you add information to the scope, and for the the tree, the hierarchy below, this is then accessible. That's yeah, exactly that. That's, yeah, that's used in a, in certain places, but it's also sometimes just. I mean, it's it's often abused. It's a kind of an anti pattern often, because you basically have a type which is dependent on something which comes from before the the type. You know, that's a problem in many cases because the type is not free floating. If you take the type which is dependent on the context data and you move it to the root, the query type, then there's no scope. Yeah. So, yeah, I, th I think, I mean, it, it definitely affects sort of what, what, what we've been calling satisfiability, like how we yes. approach composition and query planning. And I think Chris Chris has been working on this feature. He, he might have a more specific um, description of sort of how we... Yeah, it's... So, so like the implementation, what I found find strange is that it's a variable in a selection set. Yeah, uh, that that would be kind of the, the strange thing. I like we do a similar things. So it's it's equally. I'm equally not happy with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we uh, use fragments uh, for it, right? Yeah, yeah, but we also aggregate them in variables and. Yeah. Uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, I think, uh, I think what, what, one of the reasons yeah. we've, we've currently implemented this with a separate directive, like there's a from context directive currently yeah. um, that supports this feature. Um, the reason for that is that this is a feature we needed to ship sooner rather than later um, yeah. because customers were asking for it. Um, yeah. But the, the idea is that um, it could be built on top of like the generic require directive that we're yeah. already working on because the way data gets passed in is very similar and it would be really nice if if there was yeah. a syntactic extension that could support these use cases as well yeah i mean we we talked about that uh yeah it's it's like i i also think there is uh like that is one case like this hierarchical uh, context aggregation that you have the second point to that is actually in mutations sometimes you need data from another um, graph, for instance, you have um, add to shopping, but or you have a um, order mutation, 
And into this order mutation, you pass in a price and that price is what is on the shop. But now in the mutation, you actually want to verify that again, again, the catalog price. So you want to have a requirement on a, on data that is somewhere in the, uh, in the catalog service to get that. And uh, that is more, this more complex distributed uh, mutations. And that is uh, something that we also see customers uh, wanting to have. Yeah. It's there. It's something that they anyway do, but they then have to yeah. find a way to do other than over the gateway, which means that they do um, even either do it with eventing, they do it with uh, with graphical calls manually, or they do it with uh, HTTP calls or gRPC or whatever, uh, or they access the same database, which we also see people do. Uh, but um, if we can leverage this to the uh, to the um, to the gateway level then this uh, could solve many issues because of course you have transactional issues and concurrency issues and whatever but you have that anyway you do have these issues anyway so if we talk about this requirements in text um like i have to have a look how you you guys use it but if we talk about this requirements in text it, it, i think we should also cover these topics the question is a bit if we should do this in v1 or if we should just uh, go ahead with something a bit simpler uh just yeah. to make progress because yeah, yeah. Uh, you know like cap it, I, i've talked with michael about this today everything that we have in place is also the stuff that we have in place with the lookups you know at the moment the the the, the idea of them being really restrictive with the keys and stuff um, uh, so that every lookup maps to a key and whatever. It's very restrictive and we can loosen it up in the future, but it would make it easier for us to make progress with the composition and everything else rather than having more feature to think about because that feels a bit like uh, a lot of the 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 the, comp uh, the the spec efforts, you know, where you do not really make progress for years. Well, let me just clarify too, because... Uh... I know we could go down a deep rabbit hole of like context and scoping and that feature, but that's not what we want to discuss. It's the, oh, hey, you're doing it and we're doing it and probably other people will do it in the future, but the need for the field selection string syntax to possibly have yes. variables, right? So ju just that, ignoring the other use of how it's used other places and that's why we're bringing it up. But like the question is, should the field selection syntax support variables? Um, and then uh, with that, okay, yes. that, that's where you were, okay, that that is, uh, yeah. and and then uh, and even even yeah. then, we could very well decide that it's not going to be part of a V one. Um, that might be a very yes. like sane decision to make, but um, let's make sure that yeah. we've sort of discussed these things and we know we can build them on top of what we're shipping yes. in a V one. Yes, and then I, at the I, other I'm, point, I'm sorry, very much the, on board on that. Go ahead. Go. Yeah, the other point would just be that like we're using alias batching to uh, you know to pass to subgraphs at this point. So um, talking about maybe getting subgraphs to support variable batching, uh, if this and yeah. other uh, other requirements uh, need to leverage it. Yeah, yeah. We we they by the way do. we ship we shipped it now in a prototype, um, uh, like uh, in a hot chocolate preview, the variable batching, and I'm so far really happy with it. Like. Uh, it, I don't know if you have done experiments with it, but um, like it simplifies a whole lot of things and it's yep. very, very fast. Like it's, um, if, if you do it right in your graphical engine, it's very, very fast. Yeah, maybe that's something we should put back on the agenda at some point because it, it is sort of a prerequisite, I think, of uh, um, yeah. a viable V1. <laughs> Yeah, um, very, do... very good batching is a must for V1. Yeah. Uh, but like uh, why we don't have it on the agenda, I um, actually uh, am discussing it with um, Benji. It's uh, because the other working group, like the HTTP working group, will specify it as an appendix. Ah, so to... this, uh, they've, they've agreed to take it on? Is that the, the current state? Y yes. Uh -huh. it, it, there might be changes, like always, to a spec. You know, don't know if somebody finds a. Uh, it's some hair in the soup, um, but they they're gonna uh, we're gonna take it on there, and uh, it will yes. be specified. Like yeah. I have a rough outline, uh, I just put it on the side at the moment. But uh, yeah, and um, yeah, yeah. yeah and just just to, just to get back to the variable syntax, maybe um, 
I mean, it's it's definitely not meant to be just for the context feature. Like there are other ways of injecting information into these um, um, these requirements. Um, like for instance, there could be sort of implicit context from a current user or something that gets extracted from from like headers. Um, uh, there there might be other contextual information that's part of uh, um, like either client specific or a specific to an environment. Um, so there, there's a variety of things that might get sort of injected. Um, the current context feature is specifically about um, um, information that's accessible from an entity higher up in the query. That's the that's the use case here. Yeah. Yeah, but it could be also like used for other use cases. I mentioned that requires referencing uh, arguments, right? That is uh, that is something that we're not tackling yet, but potentially, you know, that could be useful because right now you cannot use fields that take arguments as a um, as a require. Well, you can if you hard code the values or if there's a default value, but you cannot yes. have dynamic arguments there. But yeah, I think <laughs> that. That uh, oh. um, we we could um, we could play around with this idea a bit. I wouldn't. I'm still not. I mean, if we find like the perfect solution, we can integrate it also in V1. Um, but uh, as I said, I'm, I'm. I think that could be dangerous for us in in doing progress. Uh, but we can play around with it a bit. For example, we can play around with uh, the idea of having because we have you know we have these these uh, these selection sets when you do objects. So maybe we can spread the uh, um, the variable as a fragment or something like this, just to to have some idea about what we can do. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, and there are also different positions for the variable in that syntax. Like you can pass it in as an argument to to a field, um, uh, or and that's the the use case that that was in the um, the uh, the example that that Dirk shared. Um, like that that's a case where you if you're starting out from a particular entity. And you're requesting um, uh, you're requesting fields like on that entity and um, like nested from from there. Um, and the syntax we chose for that is sort of a, a selection set on uh, a variable. I think that's a and that's a that's a new syntactic construct. That's not something that's used in GraphQL. While variables on arguments uh, are used. Um, we, we just haven't thought of we, we haven't really talked about how that fits into the existing like semantics uh, yeah i mean we do the same thing in fusion right we we do it with uh with uh with uh, i think with no we use fragments for where we extract the stuff right no i'm strong but maybe we can play around with we can play around with these ideas it's just yeah. that's really it, it's a deep rabbit hole that we can go in there right so what if now you have nested variables, or you have variables that come from the context that you want to, and all the crazy things that you can do, which uh, also explode the complexity of query planning, satisfiability, and all these things. Yeah. Is Pascal gone? Uh, okay. No, he's he's still here. Okay. I, it it sounded so abrupt. <laughs> There was a short break, I think, but he's, yeah. he picked it back up. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, so ne ne next steps, um, like what that I would want to have, let's um, get the thing that we have discussed in writing. Um, like uh, Pascal needs to finish that off. So we have more something to read. That yeah. at the moment doesn't include uh, any of the variable stuff or dynamics, but I think if we um, like read through that and also agree on okay, that's that's okay. We we know we need more. Uh, that's that's I think the first thing we should sign off that we have something uh, finally in the spec repository where we can say okay, that's a good base yeah. to iterate on. And and do you think we were ready to present on that? Um, during next week's larger meeting, is that a? Yeah, I also will have the uh, the directives uh, done by then. It's like I will use patch at the moment for the directive. If you have any better names, 
Um, From them. <laughs> because like I, I, I experimented with two variants uh, that, that were also, also the variants we discussed a bit, like look up with an argument. Mm -hmm. But that kind of feels strange that look up the, with a simple switch of an argument has such a different behavior with like it becomes internal uh, and then also doesn't resolve actually it's not a key resolver anymore because like uh, what lookup is for me is a deterministic function to get something by a key and patch is uh, something that can have can patch data in but it will not tell you if this uh, certain thing is really resolvable yeah i'm i'm not completely convinced but let, let's talk about it next week with some examples I, yeah. I think having a completely separate directive is also confusing because the semantics are yeah. similar we're just making like a distinction in the behavior <laughs> um I, I i yeah i still think the combination with internal does make sense um but yeah but it's so yeah, I don't like any of them, like 100%. <laughs> well, maybe someone but... at, at next week's meeting will have a better idea. Let's, let's just yeah, discuss yeah, yeah. sort of what we're trying to accomplish here and, and see what people think. Um, yeah, I mean, next yeah, next, yeah, yeah. Week, next week, there's Banshee in the meeting, and he usually pops up with a good idea, and then we have yeah. a new name, and then it so. so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Then... Uh... Does anybody have anything else? Um, yeah, I want to uh, discuss. I mean, otherwise, I don't want to hijack it. If something, as someone has something important, then go ahead. No, um, no, no, nothing, nothing specific on the spec. I was just, um, I was, I, I was, I was, I was curious because um, I think Giuseppe, I think it's your first time joining the meeting. I was just curious sort of where your interest comes from and and how you're. What like what your relationship is with um with, with, with federation and, and this standardization effort. Or maybe that's something we should say for the end if if we have something spec specific, Pascal, that you want to bring up. Uh the only thing I wanted to talk about was the discussion that we had uh in the in the Slack channel about um uh the scope of lookup and the mapping to key sets and stuff. Yeah, it's not on the agenda, but I think it's something that uh, would be good to also discuss in the group because it goes into the same direction that I uh, talked about before. That we have this very restrictive and limiting rules at the moment, and it's kind of nice to plan with these rules rather than opening it up and making it more complex. So I just wanted to know what people think about the the, the mapping between uh, a lookup. To a key, or if that should be loosened. Yeah. In this I, I think I I think that might work better with like I, I I could prepare like for another meeting maybe like a short presentation with some examples because I think it would be easier to talk about that with like everyone on the same page <laughs> because because with just words it's going to be a little bit confusing. I'm so so maybe we can save that for the meeting after next week's meeting. Um, okay. Uh, so back to you, just episode. <laughs> um, so uh, actually, I've been lurking here and there. Uh, I'm a big fan of GraphQL since uh, 2018 when I first worked with it. Um, and uh, then I was recently at API Days in New York where I met Derek there. And uh, he mentioned this working group. I was like, I'm very interested in Earth, right? So um, I was uh, already uh, looking at Open Federation when that was uh, what that seemed something at least. So I, I I thought this could be interesting to be part of, and uh, you know, just uh, mostly listening in this case. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I like the idea of, of giving back to the community. Uh, right now at the Lego Group, we are starting exper experimenting with distributed GraphQL. So uh, it's it seems interesting uh, to be part of this working group. Amazing. Good to and hear. you yeah. as you saw chocolate, so I 
at least yeah. some of your team. <laughs> uh, actually, in my team, we are the one who first implement, uh, brought uh, hot chocolate into the uh, into the group. <laughs> and uh, yeah, when we present it, we always say, "This is such a cool, funky name." <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I met some of your team a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, did you? Yeah, did maybe, you also... maybe about, maybe about uh, how this works, Giuseppe, in the in the working group, as it's your first time. If you have uh, any um, uh, topics that you would like to raise, uh, discussions that you want to kick off, or whatever. We can just make a pull request to the repository, um, to the to the agendas, and add your name and also add agenda items, and then we will go through the agenda items uh, throughout the uh, the meetings. Uh, this is all written also in the in the documentation, the repository itself. But this will keep you uh, save you some time, so you can just add stuff and then we'll talk about it. Amazing. Okay, I think if there is nothing else, we can wrap it up. Well, Martin, did you have something still on your mind? No. Okay. Not for today. <laughs> Plenty of things in <laughs> <on> my mind. <laughs> uh, then we can uh, then we can wrap up the meeting. Uh, it was great as always. Uh, see you guys next week for the uh, monthly main meeting. And with That's that, good. see you all. Cheers. Make a good one.